Volvo XC60 T8 2017 Review The most expensive Volvo XC60 is the quickest and the cleanest, but not the best. What is it? Given Volvo's brilliantly executed and duly overhyped statement about the, yes, inevitable, electrification of its future lineup, the arrival of the new Volvo XC60 T8 in the UK seems perfectly timed. With its petrol electric plug in hybrid arrangement, the range topping SUV certainly exemplifies the brand's compass heading for the next decade. Like the pronouncement itself, there is nothing particularly revolutionary about Volvo's twin engine tech. Up front, there's a 314 bhp combustion engine driving the front wheels, at the back, there's an 86 bhp electric motor for powering the rear axle. The 2.0-liter petrol four-cylinder motor is both supercharged and turbocharged, while the motor's charge comes from a mains chargeable 10.4 kWh battery pack. Although new to the XC60, the combination is familiar to Volvo's scalable product architecture, having made its debut in the larger XC90. While the system's output and functionality are much the same, the benefit of transferring to the smaller model is plain enough, the XC60 weighs about 200 kg less than its sibling, meaning that gains are made in the T8's already very brisk acceleration from 0 to 62 miles per hour. Emissions and economy remain the same at 49 gram slash km and 134.5 miles per gallon respectively. Counterintuitive, perhaps, but as Volvo is peddling the meaningless figures returned by the current European drive cycle, it's not worth fixating over. Arguably the more relevant figure is the 28 miles the manufacturer claims for the car's all-electric range, and the three and a half hours it takes to recharge from a domestic plug. What's it like? Quiet, fast and luxurious but not without some notable inconsistencies, including a predictably narrow band of real-world usability. The car's smarts, at least, are instantly noticeable, in top-spec inscription pro trim, our design is also available, the T8 displays fit and finish easily commensurate with a Range Rover Sport and, thanks to the practically noiseless pull-away, has the ambience to match its material indulgence. The XC60 T8 also has the pace. You'll need the drive mode set to power to equal Volvo's claimed 5.3 seconds 0 to 62 miles per hour time, but even in hybrid, a more conventional mingling of electric motor and engine, the XC60 is in the top tier of quick SUVs despite its heft. Having said that, extracting all, or most, of the performance is not necessarily in keeping with the car's temperament or its suggested merits. For a start, the predominantly front-wheel drive XC60, while steadfastly competent in the handling department, is no Jaguar F-Pace or Porsche Macan. Push on as you might aboard its rivals and its somewhat brittle wheel control and uncommunicative steering, alongside its inflated curb weight and grabby brakes tends to make the chassis feel like it's under duress rather than bristling with dynamic reward. Secondly, you'll chow through the car's modest battery life, and unless you're on a very short journey, managing the charge becomes a familiar preoccupation. Like a number of rival solutions, the T8 allows you to hold onto your zero emission range for later use, typically in the pure drive mode, which noiselessly spirits you about town. The problem here is that because 86 bhp is not a lot of grunt when shifting 2 tons, Volvo has not been able to banish the combustion engine completely, opting instead to keep it under a delayed, are you sure throttle response, meaning that when it does cut in, it does so with all the smoothness of a father of the bride hitting the wedding dance floor. In hybrid mode, the transition is much smoother, but there's still a gentle lull as the engine kicks in. The fact that the XC60 is at its most consistent when the battery has all but run out, or you're charging it from the engine, rather says it all. Of course, reach this point and the reasoning for buying a T8 starts to slide, we average 24.8 miles per gallon with a flattened battery, Porsche claims 24.6 miles per gallon for a Macan Turbo on an urban cycle, in cycle.
Ford Shelby Mustang GT 350R 2017 Review Ford has tried to turn the Mustang into a track machine by putting it on a diet and giving it a new engine. Has it worked? What is it? To put it politely, the Ford Mustang GT isn't the first car you'd choose to develop into a stripped-out, no-compromise track machine. For one thing it's a sizable old bus, it's 30 centimeters longer than the Porsche 911, a rather more obvious candidate, and some 10 centimeters wider, and for another, it weighs the better part of 1,800 kilograms. There wasn't a great deal Ford Performance could do about the Mustang's size, but to give the Shelby GT 350R a fighting chance on track, it ditched the rear seats, stereo, sat-nav and air conditioning, although the latter three items can be added back in optionally. The wheels are exotic carbon fiber items, too, saving 6 kilograms at each corner. The total weight loss over the 5.0 GT is 60 kilograms, which is useful if not exactly transformative. The entire chassis has been overhauled with operated components and a much more track-focused setup, while a comprehensive aerodynamic package promises much more downforce than the regular car. Most unusually, though, the warbling V8 engine that powers the conventional Mustang has been ditched for a higher revving 5.2-liter flat-plane crank V8. That's something of a departure for an American muscle car, flat-plane cranks and higher revving V8s have been the preserve of European sports cars until now. The new motor revs beyond 8,000 revolutions per minute, whereas the outgoing cross-plane V8 doesn't reach far beyond 6,500 revolutions per minute. The power and torque figures hint at a rev V8 rather than a lazy, torque-rich bruiser, 2, 526 bhp at 7,500 revolutions per minute and 429 pounds foot at 4,750 revolutions per minute are not typical Mustang numbers. The soundtrack isn't typical Mustang either, the rumbling score replaced by highly strung snarls and barks. What's it like? As the most extreme Mustang to date, the GT 350R goes to lengths not even the GT 350 model would have considered in the pursuit of racetrack performance. In fact, Ford says it didn't even concern itself with trying to make the GT 350R work on the public road. The standard car's plush leather chairs have been swapped out for heavily bolstered regress, while the steering wheel is wrapped in Olcantara. The sports seats are actually set an inch or two lower than the standard items, and with the steering column at full extension, the seating position is just about perfect. If Ford wants the GT 350R to be assessed as a track car, there are few better places to do just that than Thruxton. The UK's fastest race track is a stern test of car and driver mixing ballsy high-speed sequences with tight and technical sections. The GT 350R is more than up to it. Whereas the Mustang GT feels about as adept on circuit as a canal boat would, this stripped-out model feels right at home. That much more aggressive suspension setup takes away all of the wallow and floatiness of the standard car, replacing it with agility, control and precision. There are sections of Thruxton that demand so many different things from a car all at once, the start of the lap, for instance, combines a fast left-hand bend with a sharp crest and a heavy braking zone. Many cars would be completely flummoxed by that sequence, but the GT 350R swallows it up without any trouble whatsoever. The steering is ultra-sharp and direct. The big Brembo brakes are excellent and the fat Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires generate enormous grip and traction. In the high-speed sections, such as the intimidatingly fast church corner, the car is incredibly stable, thanks in part to the aero package. There's so little body roll or dive under braking that you quickly forget just how big and, let's be honest, heavy the GT350R is. 
Chasing an 8,000 revolutions per minute red line in a Mustang is a novel experience. The Zingy V8 is right at the heart of the driving experience and it flings the car along at a mighty rate. It's also so much more responsive than the GT's cross-plane V8. It takes only a quick stab of the accelerator to bring the revs up during a downshift, whereas you really have to get into the GT's throttle pedal to awaken the engine. The engine.